All right, then, if you have your Bibles, we do that, ask you to turn to the Gospel of Matthew, Matthew chapter 11, and we're going to begin reading in verse 27. Uh, Matthew chapter 11, and beginning in verse 27. The Bible says, the Lord Jesus speaking, All things are delivered unto me of my Father, and no man knoweth the Son but the Father. Neither knoweth any man the Father save the Son, and he to whomsoever the Son will reveal him. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of me, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall find rest unto your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Dear Lord, we thank you and praise you for your goodness and watch care. We praise you tonight for the way that you have brought Brother Dennis Stanfield's health back to him, and we stand amazed and give you praise for that. We pray that you would continue to strengthen him. Lord, for the missionaries tonight in various places, Lord, that you would be with them, that you would give them guidance and direction, and Lord, strengthen them. Lord, we pray for the safety of missionaries, and we often forget that in the day which we live, and we pray that you would keep them safe. Uh, Lord, bless our churches that are about us, uh, that uh, we would be a light in the day which we live today. We'd be faithful to give you the praise and the glory and the honor for it all, for it is in Christ's name we do pray. Amen. Now, <clears throat> somewhat familiar verses of Scripture, and we're going to look at it maybe uh, a little differently than you've heard in times past, but the Lord Jesus Christ gives us an invitation in verse 28. Now, uh, I still remember, because uh, it was kind of a, a new thing, especially for kids, when I was a, a child, uh, my, my, my first cousin, Melissa, had a birthday party, and they sent out invitations. They kind of fancy, had a little bit more money than some, and we thought that was just the neatest thing, and it had Missy's name on it. We called her Missy back then. And all the day, the time, what it was, and all, and you, and you know, everything about the party. The invitation told you everything that you needed to know. Now, we live in a day and age today where there's invitation after invitation after invitation that sometimes we run to and we don't even know what it's about. Mm -hmm. We don't even know where we're going. Or maybe we think we know where we're going, and in fact, we don't. Uh, we have to be very cautious in 2022 of what we take up and what we take as legitimate and what we take as uh, something that is a lie or not true. So going back to our text, I want you to see the Lord Jesus Christ here is identifying himself as equality with the Lord God of heaven. Uh, he's revealing himself that he was the living son of God he was, in fact, God in the flesh. And if you did not know Christ, you did not know Jehovah. And if you knew Jehovah, you would automatically know Christ. He's saying we're one and the same. Uh, we're equal. We're co-partners. We do everything together. And uh, to the Jews, that was a blasphemous statement worthy of death. But I want you to see it was a, it was a treasure truth to those that was revealed. You ever wonder about people that sat in church 30 and 40 years and just sat there? You know what the difference is? They don't, it's never been revealed to them. That's right. And, and, and you can't help that. You can't cause that to happen. Right. And so we see as the Lord Jesus is conveying this, he's going, he's really uh, fully understanding what he was saying, taking the risk, knowing what the end result would be, but yet and still, identify, yet and still identifying himself as God. Then once he introduces himself saying, I am God, come unto me. That is the invitation. Come unto me. Now, when you get an invitation, 
you got to know who it's coming from. And the person saying this is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you know what? And when everything else falls away in the world which we live today, that is something that you can depend on. You know, you see a lot on Facebook, and uh, I, I watch a lot of mystery shows when I'm out seeing patients and stuff. And and there was this uh, th this mystery I was watching, and and uh, supposedly this woman God revealed to her where the body was. Now. I can't make any statements on that, but I do believe this. The Bible says there's no personal interpretation. And the Bible says the, day of the, the days of revealing are gone. So I, I cannot believe that that's what it truly was. But you know what? You're, you're seeing people taking that hook, line, and sinker today. That man's word has become as just as trustworthy as the word of God. You know what the problem of other versions is? That is the problem. They're, they're not trustworthy. They're not to be depended on. And, and so we find here, as the Lord Jesus Christ is making this bold invitation, saying he is Christ, and I want you to come on to me. Then he put some qualifiers on there. Are all ye that labor? Now, you think about your own life, and I think about mine. What have you done, really, in the labor of Christ in your life? What is, what's been your accomplishments? What, what has the Lord bid you to do, and you were obedient? And what has He bidden you to do that you never did? Uh, and, and, you know, I fully believe that's, that is a true thing. A lot of people, well, if God's sovereign, He'll get it accomplished most definitely and for sure. But, you know, if I can be a part of it, I want to be. That's why some will have 30, some 60, and some 100. It's because how active they were in the service of God. When the Lord God told them to do something, they were obedient. And so we find here that the Lord Jesus makes an invitation to those that are weary and have been working, come unto me. So, so what, what is the what of the invitation? It's rest. Now, I've been, I've been preaching now, and it's really hard to believe, and October will be 28 years. That is just unreal to me. It's went by like that. And, and, and I began to think, I ain't had much rest. <laughs> no. I've worked the whole, my whole ministry, I've worked full time. And sometimes had more than one job in the ministry. And I, I, I was thinking about that as I was preparing. I'm like, it's not time for my rest yet. It's just not. It's time for my labor. My rest is coming. And when I'm at the feet of the Lord Jesus Christ, my rest will be begin. And I'll be with him for everlasting, uh, from everlasting to everlasting. So until then, what is the invitation for? The invitation is to work. Now, and me and Donna wanted to do something at the house, and we sent the invitation out. Work day at Larry and Donna's. Come with your shovel. I bet we wouldn't get a lot of response, do you? But now if we said, we're having a picnic, and we're providing all the food, and just so happen we're working when y'all get there, the invitation was far swivel. You see what I'm saying? You have to trust the inviter. If you don't know who's inviting, don't go. Don't go. And, and so we find as the Lord Jesus Christ is making this uh, invitation is to work, is to labor, and the rest will the rest time will come later. Then he says, and I will give you rest. Then he, the second part of the invitation, take my yoke upon you. Yeah. Now, uh, I've heard this uh, preached in different ways now through the years, but you know what? The Lord Jesus Christ was fixing to give the yoke up. The, the gospel, his time in the gospel ministry was almost over. And he was passing the yoke to his church. Now he sits at the right hand of the Father uh, uh, in the position of intercessor for those that believe. And the yoke is on us. Right. We are to be getting the gospel out. You know what? I love the 
doctrine of the church. I love the doctrine of end time, uh, of the end time things. But my biggest love is to tell a sinner you can be saved. There is a Savior in heaven. There, there was a full atonement paid, and you don't have to worry about it. In, worry about it in any way. You can be saved, and and th that's the that's the summation of the whole thing. So right now, we're at work. You know, uh, a mule or an ox in the yoke, they're working. They're getting the job done. They're 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 going about their master's business, and that's certainly where we should be today with no getting off spot. Take my yoke upon you. Learn of me. You ever rejoice, and sometimes I do, and I think about what, what a, you know, talk about a green nurse when I got out. I knew more about health care than I did that book when I was called to preach, and I think of some of the stupid things I must have said in the beginning of my ministry, and, and but you know what? Over the years, I've learned, I took up on that invitation. I've learned of the Lord Jesus Christ. I understand Him more than I ever have in my life. And I fully believe if I live another 40 years, I'll know, I'll know more about Him even yeah. more then. So that, that's an invitation. But you know, there, it's, it's a twofold invitation, is it not? You're in the yoke, and that's hard work. But if you do it, learn of me. That, that, that's where you'll understand and know and, and uh, perceive who the person of the Lord Jesus Christ is, is when you're in <coughs> the yoke. And then he says, and my burden is light. So the invitation that we find uh, in the Gospel of Matthew chapter 11 is really twofold. Number one, it's an invitation to work. And another, and another thing, later on down the road, it's an invitation to rest. So if you're having a work day, we should be there with bells on. And I'm not talking about a work day on the building or down at our place. I'm talking about getting out and do for this church what the Savior left us behind to do. Yeah. Every opportunity. Everything that we can do, every time that we can speak the name of Jesus, that's what we need to do. And not that only, but how we present. You know, uh, uh, y'all know, uh, everyone in here is family, everyone of you know that I I'm a very firm believer in being separate from this present evil world. But you know what I want to show more than that? I would love to show the love of Christ. Yeah. Just show people that I'm concerned for their eternity. That, and you know what? It's easier to wear a dress all the time than it is to show concern for eternity. It's easy for me not to pull on short bridges, but truly looking at somebody with compassion and being concerned about them. That's a whole different story, isn't it? Now, and, and, and so we find then that this invitation is a constant invitation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to look in the Gospel of Matthew a little further over, chapter 27, and we see another invitation, a separate set of circumstances, a different time in the ministry of Christ. His ministry, earthly ministry, was just about done. And I want you to see what occurs. Gospel of Matthew, chapter 27, and verse 39. Matthew chapter 27 and verse 29, our Lord Jesus Christ is on the cross hanging between uh, the, uh, the, the heaven above us and the earth, and the earth, his disciples really had forsaken him. The women were there watching him as he died. And, and notice what begins to happen in verse 39. And they, and this they were like the Jews, the people that were around him, and they passed by and reviled him. Now, when you revile someone, you're making fun of them. Uh, you're putting them down. You're saying they're no good. Uh, they're saying you're, you're saying they're vile. They're disgusting. They can you imagine the very living Son of God 
taking that abuse. That, that's what occurred on Calvary on, for my behalf and your behalf and all the redeemed. That's what he withstood in our stead because of his goodness and his grace and his love and his mercy. He did that. They reviled him, made fun of him. Then I want you to see it says wagging their heads, you know, laughing. And the Jews had a, a thing about wagging their head, head and clicking their tongue in response to stuff. It's, it's a type of mockery, like, uh, and, and kind of like we would uh, clap our hands and laugh. Uh, same type of uh, same type of thing, and they're reviling the Lord Jesus Christ and saying, "Thou that destroyedest the temple and buildest it in three days, save thyself. If thou be the son of son of God, come down from the cross." Now, I want you to see the invitation sounds good. Come down from the cross. You can be pain free. When you can feel better, come down from the cross. Now, in my younger part of my ministry, and really all my life, I still hear some preachers say this, that the devil was having a heyday on this day. Oh, no, he wasn't. He knew the gig was up. Amen. And he knew he was about to be everlastingly defeated, so he got into some of those ungodly, unsaved man and cause them to have this invitation, come down from the cross. He did not want Jesus to pour out himself. If anybody tells you anything different, they're telling you a story. If they tell you that Jesus, I uh, mean that the devil won a small victory that day, they're lying to you. That was the day he was defeated and he knew it. And so the invitation was, come on down from the cross. Now, you think about that. First of all, who was giving this invitation? The Jews were. Who, prior to this day, who were the people of God? The Jews were. So if you were not a holy man of God, and, and literally the deity in the flesh, you might listen to them. Because they were supposed to know what they're talking about. You know what? A lot of educated people today are trusted because they're supposed to know what they're talking about. But now this is the real truth. It doesn't mean it necessarily mean they do. And you know, we have to also understand this. Not everybody has your, your best spiritual well-being in mind. Just because they call themselves brother don't mean they're looking out for you. Just because they, they uh, claim to be a preacher of the Word of God, no, they don't necessarily have your best interest at heart. And so this invitation sounds good. The relief of pain, the relief of suffering, the, uh, the stop, uh, the prevention of death come down from the cross. That sounded so good. But it wasn't God's plan. And had, and we know the Lord couldn't have done this, but had the Lord not done it, we would be forever damned. Yeah. And so look at an invitation. Look at what they're saying to you. When things come up in your life, look what the fallout might be. Up and Hey, you know, uh, me and Donna's plan when we graduated nursing school was to stay here just a short time and then move to Nashville, and both of us were going to finish our masters. I thought, I thought time and time again how foolish we would have been. How and, and we may have made a little extra money, but what's money in a lifetime? Your spiritual, the spiritual guidance of your children that should come very, 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 very first. And let all the others fall into place. It sounded good, did it not? It sounded uh, like a trustworthy plan. But it wasn't the will of God. So who's the inviter? Who's hosting the event? And here we certainly know it was Satan and his bunch. And so sometimes we, like the Lord Jesus Christ, simply have to say, No. I'm not coming, I'm not participating, I will not be involved. 
Verse 41, likewise also the chief priests mocking him with the scribes and the elders said, he saved, him. he saved others himself, he cannot save. If he be the king of Israel, let him come down from the cross and we will believe on him. Again, the very same invitation to end suffering. You know, you see that a lot today, don't you? Efforts to end suffering. Well, let me be the first to say that's a line right out of the pits of hell. <clears throat> and we will never end suffering. And you know why? This flesh is depraved. There will all be pe always be people who kill other people. There will always be wars in the world that we now live. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I would love to see Roe versus Wade repealed. But you know what? This is the reality of that. And I would be the first one to vote for it. Don't get me wrong. The abortions would still happen. But they would be in secret. Mm -hmm. You're not going to change the nature of man with law. It, it has never worked. Nor will it ever work. And, and, and so we find then what we have to know and what we have to understand is what is Christ's invitation to you? Are you fulfilling what his design was for you? Are you being obedient? The next big thing that comes up, oh, you can have uh, $80,000 if you'll simply move to uh, West Texas. Well, what's in West Texas? More importantly, what's not in West Texas? Is there a good sound church there? That'd be my first question, or it ought to be. Right? See, the devil, he's a very enticing individual. And he, he will make it look good for a while. You know, uh, who was it? Was it uh, Moses? There's pleasure in sin for a season. <laughs> and you know what, what I believe the season is? The entirety of this carnal, ungodly life. But it's over like that. You turn around and you're 53 years old and you're looking at your grandchildren instead of your children. Right? And, and so we see then that we as the Lord's people, the next invitation you get, uh, weigh it out whether it be of God or whether it be of man. Last place I want to read for you tonight, the Gospel of Mark. Just a little further over, the calling of the apostles, Mark chapter 1 and verse 16. Mark chapter 1 and verse 16. I find this one very interesting. Now, as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. Ever, everyday routine chore, doing what fishermen do. Uh, that would be no different than me driving over to Paris, walking into the office, getting my stuff together, and heading out and going to see patients. A very routine thing. Now, creatures of habit, and I am the worst, I like things to be one, two, three, four. And if one little thing gets off, it gives me a quirk. But you know, when Christ came into my life, that ought to upset the boat. It ought to have changed that I, I, I should know now that it's not always going to be one, two, three, four. Because he interrupts things. He has his own design. He has his own plan. He has his own nature. And he, uh, the Bible says, he doeth what seemeth good unto himself. And so they're at their daily job. They're doing their run, routine, run-of-the-mill day. And notice what happens in verse 17. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets and followed him. Now I want you to see the invitation is very short. He gives no long explanation about what's going to be going on. He doesn't say, 
oh, this is going to be a wonderful time. And he doesn't even say it's going to be, you're fixing to enroll in the school of hard knocks, which they were. He just says, come and follow me, and I will make you fishers of mm men. -hmm. Now, knowing our nature, what would we would have done? What? What are you talking about? Fishers of men? What, what do you mean? Give me, give me a little more information, man. We're information suckers, aren't we? But obedience begins when you don't ask for it. When you just do it. When you just follow through. And we don't see any quandrum. We don't see any uh, even asking who are you or what's going on here. Notice they very meekly, obediently forsook their nets and they followed him. Now, I don't know who took over the ship. I don't know who took over their nets, but I will say this. They were still in place three and a half years later because Peter went back to them. But I want you to see the quick obedience and to not knowing where they were going. You know what that's called? It's called faith. Yeah. What did Abraham know? Nothing. Go into a land which I shall show, show thee. That's the only invitation he got. You know what that, that, that's an invitation that's hard to take up. In man's eyes, idea, it, it's foolish. In man's ideas, it, it, you know, it's beyond comprehension. Why would I do this? Why would I leave all this wonderful stuff behind and follow you? I'm a successful fisherman. But we never see them question one thing. That's faith. That's believing and understanding probably more than this old boy could ever understand. Hasn't happened to me yet. Maybe someday, but it is a level of faith that I would strive for and they're obedient. Now the invitation ended up, ended up being a rough one. Ended up being where they were walking in cornfields pulling ears for themselves. It ended up being one where they're in the middle of the sea about, about to drown until the Lord God says, peace be still. It was a rough invitation, but they were faithful and obedient to do it. Verse 19, and when he had gone a little farther thence, he saw James, James the son of Zebedee and John his brother. Now, the way that I understand this to be set up and, and from Matthew's, uh, Matthew's account of the same events, um, they must have literally been side by side. They were in the dock. The ships were beside each other. Because if you remember, uh, it says that uh, Peter had drawn out a little bit so the Lord Jesus could preach and that, that he could still be above people and people could not throng him so bad. And he preached a sermon and then he told Peter, he said, <clears throat> go out fence and cast your nets. And it was such a big thing they couldn't get them all up. And, and he called to these boys and uh, James and John and they put some of the fish in there and both the boats began to sink because there was so much fish to be had. Very same circumstances, just that Mark did not include the fishing portion of it. But I, I want you to see they had heard what was going on over there and it makes you wonder What's, what is Peter and Andrew doing now? I mean, that's what we would do, wouldn't it? Poor old Peter. He don't have enough sense to come in out of the rain. Right? That boat's brand new, and he's, he's about to walk off and leave it. Then turn to just a few feet away. I want you to follow me, too. And it said they did the very same thing. You know what that's called? That's called an effectual call. <laughs> that when he calls us effectually, there, there, there's no options. There, there, there's, no, there's, no turning, there's no turning back. And we know, and I've often wondered about Andrew. Uh, why wasn't he in the inner three? 
what caused him to be a little bit different. Because we know that Peter, James, and John were the inner three. Andrew was out here with the with the other uh, eight. And uh, why? I think Andrew ever thought back. I really enjoy fishing. That was a good way to make a living. I really enjoyed being out in the bay. You know, mankind cannot help but think that way. Uh, absolutely. You know, if I had had the opportunity, <clears throat> don't say this excuse, and it may be, <laughs> I just don't think what I did before my brain surgery. But I wish I had went to nurse practitioner school before all that happened. And sometimes I catch myself thinking, that would have been so nice. No, God's plan was the very best thing for my life. And me embracing that is where happiness comes in. Because you know what? You're not going to change the immutable plan of God. But you can, you can uh, accept it in a, beer, a big bear hug, or you can resist it and be grievous the rest of your life, one way or the other. And I would much rather, at least most of the time, choose to be happy. Now, one thing, if we really claim that verse in uh, Romans chapter 8, all things work together for good to them that love the Lord, to them whom are called according to his purpose. Then we have to believe every variable is exactly where it needs to be. So the next time you get an invitation, look at it real carefully. If it's offered by God, go with it with everything that you got. Yeah. Uh, and if it's not, run like a scalding dog. <laughs>